One of the main critiques of autonomous vehicles is that they lack the human touch, the ability to actually feel the road. Well, that's where my next guest comes in. Tactile Mobility has developed innovative tech that brings this missing tactile sense to autonomous vehicles, letting self-driving cars not only see the road, but also feel it. And here to tell us more about it is Amit Nissenbaum, CEO of Tactile Mobility. Welcome. Thank you very much. So what exactly does tactile mobility do? Uh, as you said, uh, tactile mobility augments the usual uh, senses uh, that uh, people know that uh, autonomous vehicles have, which is well, the sense, the sense of sight, uh, facilitated by LiDAR, radar, and as such, with the ability not only to look at the road, but also to feel the road. So can we talk a little bit about this? Can you elaborate maybe on the main challenges that are, that's facing uh, the autonomous vehicles industry today? They can see the road, they can't feel the road. Can you right. expand on that a little bit? Of course. I think that the best uh, way to think about it is through the use cases that uh, autonomous vehicles can address today uh, and the ones that we will need to address if we want them to become a mass market uh, uh, product. Mm -hmm. So if you think to yourself about the today's uh, autonomous vehicles, usually you see them roaming around coffee shops, uh, maybe stuck on a, on a traffic jam on the 280 or the 101 in a, a California. But you, are, you will be uh, pressed to see an autonomous vehicle doing, for instance, an on or off a, a ramp maneuver, meaning getting on the highway, highway or off the highway. Reason being is that those kind of use cases uh, require, the, or require those um, uh, vehicles to have the same senses that a human being has when we uh, drive on the road. And and if you think about it, when we drive on the road, we're not look only looking at the road, we're also feeling it. And going back to that use case of on-off ramp maneuver, uh, if you think about it, we're feeling. We're feeling how we're getting into the ramp. We feel if we're getting thrown away because we mm -hmm. entered it too fast. We're feeling if we're hitting a bump or a pothole and we need to adjust. And autonomous vehicles need to uh, be able to do the, the same. Mm -hmm. And so how does tactile mobility compensate for this? Well, I think that what's uh, one of the things that are interesting about tactile mobility is that we're a software-only solution. Uh, we have an emb embedded software that is being embedded in the vehicles, on one of the vehicle computers, on one of the ECUs, and we leverage data from multiple non-visual existing sensors, sensors such as wheel speed, wheel angle, RPM, and so on and so forth. And the smartness of our solution is the ability to ingest all of that data, to fuse it, to clean it from noises, and then to apply AI on it in order to derive insights and valuable uh, information that is being fed back into the vehicle computer in order for those to have better context to make better informed driving decisions. Mm. And when you say better informed driving decisions, I mean, do you mean solely sort of maneuvers that today are unavailable or as well as safety issues such as Absolutely. braking, on time, things like that? Uh, interesting that you bring up uh, braking because the answer to your question is yes, it's both, okay? Mm -hmm. And if we're focusing on braking, for instance, one of the things that we can allow is to uh, uh, enable ABS systems, the systems that allow a vehicle to brake and not to slip, mm -hmm. to shorten the braking distance. I won't get into the nitty-gritty tech, uh, technology details, mm -hmm. but that's one of the, uh, of the value propositions that we have, even for vehicles of today. And th that's a challenge that has been a challenge, at least for vehicles of today. We've heard in the news a number of incidents where you, you know, vehicles haven't been able to brake on time. Right. Uber vehicles, things like that. So right. do, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. So um, for instance, if I will give you, I won't, uh, I won't opine on the Uber cases, etc., <laughs> or the Waymo, but what I can tell you, I, I can elaborate a little bit about that use case. So imagine to yourself a, a, the adaptive cruise control functionality, that functionality of cruise control that also adapts the vehicle a, a speed in order to keep a set distance from the vehicle ahead of it. Mm -hmm. So using visual, using visual uh, sensors, that vehicle can know uh, the distance from the front vehicle, the speed of the vehicle, of course, its own speed, and to calculate um, conceptually what the distance uh, should be in order to uh, 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 keep a safe distance. Mm -hmm. However, today, those vehicles cannot know what is called the grip level. How um, sharply can they uh, break before they will start to slip? And without knowing that, the vehicle computers need to um, uh, take or uh, to take a safe approach and to keep a large distance. Mm -hmm. Now, one will think that that's a, a good thing. From some perspective, yes, but it's not natural. It's not a, a natural experience for the driver and the passenger. And even more so, ironically, it's not as safe. And the reason being is that if you keep 
too large of a distance, someone, especially in Israel, might cut in, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden it becomes less safe. Mm -hmm. So the ability to equip the vehicles with, for instance, uh, information about the grip level is enhancing its safety mm -hmm. and user experience. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious, at what stage are you in now? Is this technology already out there? Is it implemented in cars? Is it working? Indeed. Uh, it is being implemented, uh, implemented and being further implemented in several what is called OEMs, car manufacturers. We're working with seven car manufacturers in North America and Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, most of them, unfortunately, I cannot disclose the name. One that has been talked about is Ford, that we have a very uh, strong and very exciting partnership with. Well, great. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today and for keeping us all safe on the road. Thank you very much for having me.